Hello. <laughs> so sorry. Hello and a very warm welcome to today's session brought to you by Team Badger's Exam Prep. I hope all of you are doing really well this weekend. Uh, we have already kickstarted a new month, so I hope all of you have done an audit as to uh, what were certain, what were certain important aspects, what were key takeaways that you had from the uh, last month altogether. Try to implement all those key takeaways for your preparation this entire month. Uh, without further ado, I think we were already uh, running overboard so without further ado i think let's just very quickly get started right now i think positivity is really important try to keep that keep the momentum going if you're preparing for this net exam itself there's absolutely no need to get worried panicked whatever you can do with whatever time that you're having that's more than enough right now uh we will be posting a couple of things we keep on sharing de uh, detailed uh, other aspects as well on the telegram platform so please stay uh, connected with us on the telegram platform it's nisha english ugc net Nisha English UGC net. Uh, I will be posting a couple of other things this week as well. Revision should be a priority. There is absolutely no need to get worried, but just try and make sure that all of you are reviewing. Practice is something which is really important right now. Getting a stock check of the previous year's papers will really help you in the long run as well. Today, our priority is going to be to look at 25 unique, most important questions. These are questions that we've not practiced so far uh, in, in previous sessions altogether. The, these are questions that are taken from so there are questions on Milton there's question on Russian writings there are questions included on uh, important texts that are coming in so we've got a very uh, different variegated pool of questions that we are having in today's session that we'll be practicing so I think without further ado let's just very quickly get started let's just very quickly uh, dive in so that all of us can kickstart, all of us can get started, all of us can, uh, you know, take a quick look at all these questions which are there. Uh, of course, we've been talking about, I think we've been talking about your motivation levels to be really high. So it becomes a priority for all of you to keep yourself self-driven, motivated, because if you're not going to be motivated, trust me, the journey will become really pathetic for everybody. You will not enjoy the process at all. You'll just be stressed entirely all the time. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning. There's Vivas, Varendra, Aftara, Shalini, Rupesh, Tabasum, Suraj, Tahmina, Ravi, Bavli. Uh, good morning, Diti Priya, Manisha, Shri, Ashitama. I'm just going now in the backward order as well. Um, Simran, I'll, I'll talk about all these details as well. We'll discuss about all these details as well. What all is required. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Uh, so um, I think without further ado, let's just also very quickly launch into it. But I would say that, you know, a couple of uh, stock check, uh, hygiene checks, so to say, while your preparation. Uh, first of all, I think food is, of course, mandatory. Uh, if you've not really eaten well, then trust me, things would not really go very further. Virginia Woolf has said that as well. One cannot think well, love well sleep well if you've not dined well you're going to be like remember the snickers ad uh the snickers ad that you know jab tu hungry hota hai, to you become very cranky altogether uh but i would also suggest don't at all try to get into the category of becoming overweight because during exams we tend to put on a lot of weight also uh so just eat as much as um it is important try to eat snackable content every now and then try to have fresh juices all across and keep yourself fit healthy take out time for exercising as well it's genuinely boosts your uh, entire so-called uh, retention span altogether just get yourself surrounded with a lot of positivity honestly just try to figure out what are you doing wrong in your mock test that you're giving a lot of you've written i'm getting very disheartened uh, while giving the mock test even surbhi for that matter i don't know if surbhi is here she was also writing it that you know in mocks i'm not able to score that's okay just improvise adapt and you know just overcome those problems altogether and always remember just seize the moment all of your students of carpidium theory altogether right so this is not going to be coming in at all never doubt yourself and just enjoy the process that's my only advice to everybody be curious trust me anybody who's curious will surely get a grf mark my words about it but anyone who's just probably worried about clearing the exam might not be able to do it immediately Okay, uh, if anybody wants any support, uh, especially if they're looking at December uh, preparation or if you're preparing for your upcoming set and net exam, the drastic changes that we're getting in the curriculum, uh, or if you're preparing for your PhD entrances or any sort of literature based examination, we're having a completely revised plan that's going to be coming in for the complete coverage. There are a couple of important aspects that have been included uh, exhaustively, properly, thoroughly, uh, so that you know the 
classes itself become the only solution for everybody to just go back to. Uh, so just do take a look at it in case if you're preparing for the December edition. You can take a look at the foundation batches, right? So the foundation batches which are there, you may want to take a look at it. There are drastic changes. Like I said, there's a lot of async content which is going to be uh, produced right now in order to help you out in the entire process. A lot of uh, content curation uh, at the back end which is going on for that is really exciting. Um, so of course, I think uh, you'll be able to see the end product also really well. Okay. So here we go. Let's kick start. This is the first question. The Prince's Progress. The Prince's Progress and other poems belong to which of the following Victorian poet? It's belonging to which of the following Victorian poet? Who's the poet who's actually writing this? Who's the poet who's actually writing this? There's a, a different language that is being spoken by some of you right now in the chat box. What is the right answer here, everybody? And you can add whatever questions we are doing today. You can actually add them to the relevant, uh, you know, units altogether. Like this question can go to your Victorian age uh, while you're looking at it. So I think that will be very, very helpful. Uh, no, it is not. It is not AC Swinburne. It's not AC Swinburne. <laughs> Neha Bakat has given the right answer. The Princess Progress and other poems is Christina Rossetti's second volume of poetry that was getting published by Macmillan in 1866. 1866 is when we are able to see the Princess Progress is coming. Uh, so please keep that in mind by Macmillan altogether. Uh, we are able to see that, you know, DG Rossetti had designed all the illustrations, the binding for publication uh, altogether. Uh, he had also done the same for Goblin market also by the way uh, and you know the princess progress is telling us a story of the princess awaiting the return of her prince she is wanting her prince to come back the princess is looking after that when will my prince come back and uh, what we are able to see is that there are a lot of self and indulgences that she encounters a lot of temptations that she encounters the prince finally uh, is returning the uh, prince is also undergoing a lot of temptations indulgences and the prince finally returns and what we are able to see is that the princess has actually died. When the prince comes back, the princess has died. So, so that is the entire, the prince's progress that we are able to see. He's progressing because he's overcoming all the temptations. He's progressing because he's able to overcome all the temptations altogether, right? Uh, so that is, of course, there. And, you know, the title illustration, which is also there, it is actually trying to depict the princess uh, who's staring uh, at the window because she's waiting for the prince to actually return altogether. How many poems are there? There are 46 poems that are there in The Princess Progress by Christina Rossetti. Illustrations given by D.G. Rossetti. Who is the, the illustrations provider? The illustrations are given by Dante Gabriella Rossetti. Please remember that. Okay. All right. Uh, Jess Butterworth. Jess Butterworth's play Jerusalem. Jess Butterworth's play. Jess Butterworth's play Jerusalem is set against the backdrop of Jess Butterworth. Just Butterworth. What is the right answer here? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Okay, Nikumani is saying that's Asmis that is being spoken. That's great. Good to hear that. Okay, what is the right answer here, everybody? What becomes the right answer here for everyone? Jerusalem by Jess Butterworth. Uh, you know, it, it actually opened in the Jerwood Theater. Where, where did it open? It opened in the Jerwood Theater. Uh, you can get this question as well. It was opening at the Jaywood Theatre in London. Jaywood Theatre is there in London itself. And uh, Jaywood Theatre of the Royal Court Theatre in London. And it, it came in 2009. And when was it coming in? Absolutely right. It's coming on Saint uh, It's coming on Saint George's Day. I saw uh, I saw somebody writing Neha Bucket. Only Neha Bucket has given the right answer this time as well. So Saint George's Day is the right answer. Uh, so we are able to see that, you know, the morning of the local country fair, uh, Saint, Saint George's Day is there uh, so please remember that so here first of all do keep that in mind Jess Butterworth's play Jerusalem set against the backdrop of St. George's Day what is it St. George's Day that we are talking about St. George's Day that we are looking at so in your modern drama uh, a lot of you keep on asking what kind of questions come in how do we come to know what kind of questions will actually come in so this is how you can actually even include more of your uh, notes when you are preparing so when we are looking at all these kind of uh, 
uh, writing so you know you can always just completely uh, try to encapsulate that that will really be very very helpful so jess butterworth uh, the play opening at the jaywood theater uh, this particular play you can see jess uh, you know jess butterworth himself talking about his play on youtube there are a couple of videos uh, if you're interested you can always take a look at it as well to get a better understanding uh, but otherwise also jerusalem is a really important work it's like one of the uh, most famous works in the recent part past altogether and what we are able to see over here is that you know this is this is trying to tell you about uh, english country community it is also trying to talk to you about the countryside altogether how beautiful it looks from the exteriors but what are the intricacies what are the levels at which we are able to see those problems emerging there so uh, jess butterworth's jerusalem Please remember, it is an important work that is coming in. Right. Uh, this is an important work that is coming in. So please keep that in mind. In Robert Browning's Pipa Passes, which of the following Italian town is mentioned? Which Italian town is mentioned in Browning's Pipa Passes? I'm sure everybody knows Pipa Passes, but NET will also give you these kind of questions. It does gives you these kind of questions to just check your um, elaborate discussion. Remember, in Prelude, which all universities are mentioned, these kind of questions are really simpler and they come in. No worries, Suraj. It's perfectly all right. It's not important to get right answers here. It is important for you to understand that what kind of questions can you expect in your exams, right? So that is the reason the class is looking at some very important, commonly expected questions that you can get. So Butterworth, you can make, make a note of him. Uh, if you were uh, aware about it, that's great at the beginning. But otherwise, you know, The Prince's Progress by Christina Rossetti, you can make a note of that as well. Excellent, excellent. A majority of you are getting it right. What is Pipa Passes? It's a verse drama, right? What is Pipa Passes? It's a verse drama which is coming by Robert Browning. Robert Browning is a patriarch in, in a particular way of the Victorian poetic uh, pantheon of poets who's coming in. This is getting published in 1841 and when is uh, it's, it's a part of Bells and Pomegranate series altogether. So there is a, you know, there's a young, blameless, silk winding girl she is going innocently through the environments of aslo 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 is the right answer over here asolo is the right answer over here so that is even mentioned there and and what we are able to see is that you know she she's she's uh, she is able to see kindness virtue uh, wherever she's uh, passing by she's able to see that she sings as she goes and her songs are influencing others also to be good right so so that is something so that that is one of the major reasons why robert browning is also called as one of the most optimistic victorian poets right he's considered to be one of the most optimistic victorian poets which of the following characters in tom's two parts arcadia belongs from the past the person is coming from the past who's coming from the past <coughs> i'm so sorry tom's two part is also by the way a really important writer that you're having What is the correct answer here? Yes, everyone. Akidia 1993 play. Absolutely right. A is the right answer. Majority of you have started getting A as the right answer. So when is Akidia coming? It's coming in 1993. It's a play by Tom Stupart that is telling you. Remember, we did a question. Which of the following uh, Stupart plays is dealing with the past, the relationship between past and present, order and disorder, certainty, uncertainty? Remember, this was a question that we had done. So the work of Tom Stupart that's dealing with the past and present, order and disorder, certainty and uncertainty, is Arcadia. Arcadia is set in the Sidley Park. Remember the countryside house in Derbyshire. So that is also all these pointers we had actually discussed Sidley Park. So that is also how if you are commonly attending all the sessions and at least practicing it, you will be able to see already a couple of your pointers are completed altogether. And what we are able to see is that it is covering a period from 1809, 1812 till the present day. So it's coming in 1993. It is almost covering a period from 1809 to 1812 till the present day. Till the present day. That's the time period that it's trying to uh, traverse altogether. And we are able to see two modern scholars and the houses, current residents, how we are able to see them coming in. There's also Thomas, Thomasina's character. She's coming in here. 
here i had told you um about uh, all these details if you can go back uh, you know to your notes altogether i think in one of the youtube lectures only we discussed it which of the following characters is uh, belonging from the past it's septimus hodge who's coming from the past it's septimus hodge who's coming from the past right so please keep that in mind uh, that a lot of times these kind of questions uh, like uh, harold pinter tom stupard their in depth characterizations these questions are also coming in so it's always a good idea to know about the plays and what are the uh, plays trying to talk about tom stupard as it is is important okay even when we talk about rosencarts and guildenstern are dead the absurd reworking of hamlet which is taking two subaltern characters from the play hamlet and giving them the center stage in the play so all of these writings are going to be important altogether okay so please keep that in mind okay uh, let's quickly come on to the next one which of the following is not the theme of john milton's john milton samson agonists it is not a theme which is not a theme that we are able to look at, look like uh, sorry which is not the theme see ya So Zia, I want you to like you know clear the exam, and then we're going to be interviewing you for the spotlight. Okay. <laughs> okay. What is the right answer? <coughs> so sorry. Sorry. <clears throat> right, absolutely right. Some of you, uh, no, 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 no. See, remember, women cannot be the answer. A lot of you are answering uh, women. not the theme the question is basically asking not the theme women is really integral right samson agnes is rather written uh, the, the tragic closet drama is written inspired by his nagging wife as well the three wives that he married right uh, so one of the wives is actually representing the character of delia so women is definitely a theme don't talk about women uh, acts of violence are also there uh, because you're able to see the revenge and destruction of god's enemy so revenge is there violence is there women uh, is a theme altogether it's telling you about the betrayal of samson at the hands of his wife delia right so it's telling you about the negative impact of love altogether women men's desire that is coming in religion is also there by the way because you know we are able to see uh, that how uh, samson wants to return back to god altogether that is another important view point but death is not a theme death is not a theme as such which is being being concerned about over here in samson agnes so please keep that in mind death is not a theme women violence religion these are all there in the tragic closet drama which is coming by milton so the tragic closet drama has acts of violence it's having religion it's talking about women it's it's also talking about gods uh, uh, part all together but death is not something particularly discussed over here right we are not able to see death particularly being discussed a question from classical literature which of the following greek tragedies has a watchman in its prologue it's having a watchman in the prologue yes which which ones having a watchman in the prologue a watchman is there in the prologue so where are we able to see the watchman is also there in the prologue shalini that see see theme is something different from what is happening in the plot okay so themes are certain important concepts recurring motifs that are coming consistently again and again right death is not something that is being mulled over remember the basic premise why is milton writing it because of his nagging wife women is there women as a question is there violence is constantly populated from the very basic theme how is samson coming how is he associated with god or the the entire theme altogether but death is something which is happening but it's not being spoken about or glossed about the the more important aspect over here is that he is getting betrayed by his wife i hope that makes sense over here Okay, Agamemnon is absolutely the right answer. It begins with watchman on the duty on the roof of the palace at Argos. He is waiting for a signal that will announce the fall of Troy to the Greek armies. 
and the first purpose of the prologue is to basically ensure that the play is set in motion uh, there is a night watchman who for 10 years has been looking for the beacon that means agamemnon the king that watchman has been looking for 10 years for the beacon the agamemnon uh, that agamemnon should come back right so finally the night watchman is really happy to see the beacon of light agamemnon has come back again so he's really happy because he was waiting for agamemnon for 10 long years agamemnon versus beacon light beacon of light beacon of light altogether so this watchman has been night watchman has been waiting for him for for the past 10 years who's the oldest son of tamburlaine in in tamburlaine by christopher marlow tamburlaine the great part 1 part 2 a very important tragic tragedy that we are able to see uh, christopher marlow as it is is important university which are important from your examination perspective as well what is the right answer that you are having over here what becomes the right answer tamburlaine the great in two parts telling you about the central asian emperor timur's life story <clears throat> What is the right answer here? Yes, yes, yes. I saw I Aniha, Zahida, Tahmina. Everybody has given the right answer. Tamburlaine the Great. This particular play is having Calphus. Calphus is the eldest son. So what we are able to see is that this particular work was a milestone in Elizabethan age public drama. You are able to see that you know uh, the earlier Tudor plays were having clumsy dialogues, loose plots altogether. But here the play is actually something which is uh, beautifully knit together. it's very well structured the renaissance humanism is coming in as a theme uh, tamblin's aspirations his aspirations um, that is something which is being talked about that is the concept of renaissance humanism that man is at the center and whatever he or she aims to achieve can become a reality altogether uh, tamblin what we are able to see is he is grooming his sons to be conquerors as well and his oldest son is calphus Calphus prefers to stay by his mother's side. He does not wants to uh, be like uh, Timur. He doesn't wants to be like Tamburlaine altogether, and that is the reason Tamburlaine doesn't likes him at all. Tamburlaine's like you know. So here you can make that comparison between things fall apart. How we are able to see that you know uh, there is the same uh, sort of a divide which which we can see between Okongo as well as uh, you know Noe because uh, there also there is this entire notion that masculinity should be preserved, or you can use. them as your myth criticism examples as well so calphus is absolutely the right answer and he is not having similar ambitions like tamburlaine altogether okay which of the following allegations are raised against reverend t lawrence a shannon in tennessee williams the night of the iguana the night of the iguana reverend t lawrence shannon in life of the the night of the iguana the night of the iguana <clears throat> Tennessee Williams again important street car name desire everybody knows so net gives you questions from the other works of major writers as well that's a very common net pattern that you always are able to see so the night of the iguana it is actually a play which is uh, based on his short story itself next time you can get a question that which of the following Tennessee Williams play is based on his short story the night of the iguana is one play that is based on his short story and what is the right answer here yes absolutely right absolutely right i can see a lot of you so 1940s mexico reverend t lawrence shannon has been locked out or locked out of his church after what we are able to see over here is that you know that there is a clear clear indication that there is statutory rape uh, so so reverend shannon is uh, being presented he is being charged on those grounds altogether uh, you can take a look at the play as well so uh, the allegations that is raised against shannon is statutory rape right that those are the allegations that are there in the night of the iguana the night of the iguana night of the iguana by tennessee williams there is this character of Te uh, reverend t lawrence shannon and statutory rape is one of the charges that he's accused of Eugene O'Neill's Morning Becomes Electra is a retelling of which of the following classical story it's a retelling of which of the following classical story it retells which of the following classical story which classical story is being retold over here in this particular regard <clears throat> what is the right answer 
Yes, Shalini. Rather, we'll be asked. We'll be coming on to a question related to memory plays as well. What is the right answer over here? No worries. No worries. Even if you've forgotten, that's perfectly all right. What becomes the right answer here, everybody? Yes, we've got Palguni also as answer it. Manisha, Simran, everybody has answered it. Oristia by uh, Escalades is a retelling of, um, you know, the, so, so Morning Becomes Electra is a retelling of the Oristian trilogy altogether. Uh, the characters are paralleling, paralleling the Greek play. Uh, Agamemnon from Oristian tril trilogy is General Ezra Manon, right? So you are having General Ezra Manon. General Ezra, Ezra Manon is there. General Ezra Manon is actually representing the character of Agamemnon. He's representing the character. Manon is representing the character of Agamemnon. Clyton Minestra becomes Christine, right? Christine is Cl uh, Clyton Minestra. Christine becomes Clyton Minestra. So remember Agamemnon, his wife Clyton Minestra, Aegisthus, Aegisthus and Clyton Minestra together are killing Agamemnon. Why? Because Agamemnon had sacrificed her daughter Iphigenia. He, uh, he had sacrificed the daughter Iphigenia altogether. So that was the major co concern and reason over here. Uh, we also have, we also have Orin. Orin becomes Oristeus. Orin is becoming Oristeus. Orin becomes Oristeus altogether. So there are parallels that we are able to see in Morning becomes Electra. Electra becomes Lavinia, right? So uh, Agestius is Adam Brandt altogether. So there are all these peop uh, people who are coming in. So the, the cursed house of Atreus, the story of the cursed house of Atreus is getting retold over here in Eugene O'Neill's Morning becomes Electra. Morning becomes Electra. There's a retelling altogether. People have analyzed the work through Freudian lens as well. So that, that also becomes like a really important way to analyze and interpret this work altogether. So please keep that aspect also in mind. Okay, Arthur Miller's play, The Crucible, is associated with which of the following political thinking practices? Which of the following political thinking practices is it associated with? The Crucible is associated with which of the following political thinking uh, political thinking practices? This is like a really simple question, so I expect all of you to get the right answer here. I don't want anyone to give the wrong answers here. <coughs> I'm so sorry. All right, what becomes the right answer, everyone? What is the right answer? Yes, absolutely right. McCarthyism is the right answer. McCarthyism is absolutely the right answer over here. Arthur Miller's The Crucible, it is actually associated with McCarthyism. McCarthyism Crucible 1953 by Arthur Miller. It is trying to tell you about the story of the Salem witch trials as well. Remember, which took place in Massachusetts. This question also comes. Um, Miller is writing the play as a kind of an allegory of McCarthyism. McCarthyism because, you know, you're able to see uh, what, what had happened was that in United States, government had started persecuting the people who were considered to be communists altogether. So there was this entire communist phobia that was clearly visible. So McCarthyism is a practice where you're trying to, uh, you know, where, where you're, you're literally trying to uh, make these acquisitions uh, on anybody who's doing anything with regards to communism altogether, because obviously the Cold War was there between USA and USSR. So there was ample amount of suspicion against the communist forces altogether. Together, right so u.s senator back then joseph mccarthy was there um our uh, our wisconsin is is here over here so you're able to see that a lot of political uh components are coming when we are looking at the crucible the salem witch trials are of course a, a a mention as well because we are able to see it's trying to you know partially uh dramatize the fictionalized story of the salem witch trials itself that is something which is coming in altogether. Okay, moving on to the next question. Which of the following characters from Henry Epson's play, The Master Builder, also appears in his play, The Lady from the Sea? The Lady from the Sea. These questions are also very common. Marlow appears in how many characters? Uh, so, so you know, a character uh, or, or, or how many times James Joyce's work, we are able to see Stephen's character coming in and how many plays. So, these kind of questions are very common. So, uh, whoever is or Shakespeare's plays, how many characters are having, like, you know, how many uh, characters are having the same name in which all plays all together? These questions are really common. What is the right answer here? What becomes the right answer here? The master builder, Norwegian playwrights work all together. <clears throat> 
राइट 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 Yeah, so Sia, don't worry. I think let's just let's just wait for the list to come first. That when is the exam? Uh, by the looks of it, I don't know why they've still not uh, declared it because we're already sitting on the second. Um, and if it's like you know tentatively starting on the eighth, we don't have any time whatsoever. So I think I'll I'll, I'll leave the conjecture at bay. Let's just wait for the uh, date sheets to actually come in. <coughs> I'm so sorry. And in case if it's going to coincide with a with the main national exam i'm sure we can always write to them and they will be considering the rescheduling part for sure okay which of the following characters from henry kepson's play uh, so here we are able to see that hilda wangel's character hilda wangel's character is a commonality altogether so uh, what we are able to basically see over here is that uh, there is there is halward uh, halward uh, solness who's coming he's a master builder and he's become the most successful builder in his hometown right so anybody who's interested in prop tech property technology so prop tech is like you know your property and technology just like you have ed tech anyone who's interested in real estate uh, you can actually read this the master builder by norwegian writer altogether so he becomes a very successful builder and what we are able to see is that uh, over a period of time there are a series of fortunate coincidences um which were you know which were which were really uh, helpful for him to climb up the ladder altogether um and here we are able to see that in both the master builder as well as the lady from the sea we are in a position to see helda wangel's character coming in helda wangel is introduced as a character in both of these works right so uh, please keep that in mind master builder is also an important work by the norwegian writer master builder also becomes a really important work and helda wangel angle's character is common in all of these plays which amongst the following is the director of the play within the play in anton chekhov's siegel play within the play in anton chekhov's siegel <clears throat> what is the right answer here everybody what becomes the right answer <coughs> so sorry siegel over here c is the right answer siegel uh, anton chekhov's play 1895 it was first produced in 1896 and the play is placing a country estate which is owned by mr sorin sorin is a retired senior civil servant whose whose health is deteriorating he is the brother of the actress uh, erinka and you are able to see that you know uh, erinka has just come to the estate for a brief uh, vacation with her lover uh, so all those characters are getting introduced all together and here what we are able to see uh, we are in a position to see that the director of the play within the play is actually uh, constant treplev treplev is the character who's the director of the play within the play uh, he's he's creating this new theatrical form do take a look at anton chekhov's writings because chekhov uh, augustin berg uh, your uh, henry capson they do come because they're trying to transition and change drama altogether which of the following characters is not from goethe's faust goethe's faust which is who is not a character who is not a character who is not a character which of the following characters is not from uh, goethe's faust you are not able to see these characters coming in so who is not a part of it who is not a part of it which of the characters are actually not a part of it at all first is a tragic play in two parts remember and we are able to see that uh, that you know uh, the faustian myth is of course important and first is considered by many people to be the magnum opus also right so that is also of course really important what is the right answer here what becomes the right answer here everybody yes absolutely right ravi ravi pandey and, and everybody else is also answering it correctly uh, d is absolutely the right answer here right d is absolutely the right answer here so what we are able to see over here is that uh, that um, here valentina is not a character per se valentina is not a character uh, you can even see the the works that we are doing today at least definitely see it from the oxford companion at least okay these works should be surely seen valentina is not there valentine is there valentina is not there which of the following does not classify as harold pinter's memory plays harold pinter's memory plays so which of the following is not a part of harold pinter's memory play 
Harold Pinto, remember, a Nobel Prize winning uh, playwright that we are talking about. And Pinto is, of course, a very influential British modernist poet, postmodernist, uh, postmodernist playwright, rather. Uh, and we are able to see that he is writing on multiple themes. The memory plays, the memory plays. What are the memory plays? Where memory is playing a really critical role altogether. So, which is not a memory play? Which is not a memory play over here? So, the, you know, the critics, the critics have said that there are some of the plays which has uh, which have the elements of memory coming in, uh, like landscape, uh, silence, night, no man's land altogether. Uh, so, which is not, which is not an example. Yes, birthday party is not an example of a memory play. Birthday party is not a part of the memory play at all, right? It's not a part of the memory play at all. Rather, that is a sort of a more absurd display. Family voices, old times, betrayal, these are all part of memory plays. It's having the element of nostalgia. It's having the element of memory being a really critical force. In which of the following European novels does the young man return to Russia after a long period abroad where he was receiving treatment for epilepsy? He he was getting treatment for epilepsy and then he comes back to Russia. Then he's coming back to Russia. So which work are we talking about? Which work is this where we are able to see that the person comes back to Russia? The person is coming back to Russia. Yeah, birthday party is not uh, a part of it. Birthday party is not an example of a memory play per se. It is an important play, but it's not classified as a memory play over here. What is the right answer here, everybody? So this is a writing which is coming by Fyodor Dostoevsky. Yes, 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 absolutely right. This is the idiot that we're talking about. Uh, you know, this is coming in the Russian messenger. Prince Mishkin, the novel's main character, he's the young man who's coming to Russia because he was abroad. He was getting treated for epilepsy. And uh, the fact that we are able to see that, you know, he had uh, impact of his illness for a very long period of time. But uh, he's innocent. There's lack of social experience. Uh, we are we are able to see that that you know uh, th this this clear uh, clearly is getting highlighted as well. Most of the other characters are calling him an idiot because he's not socially more experienced. He's more innocent. That is the reason he's called as an idiot altogether. So this is the story of Prince Mishkin that we are looking at. Prince Mishkin is the person who's coming in. So the idiot is absolutely the right answer. He's coming back to Russia after a really elongated period post his treatment of epilepsy. Which of the following authors wrote a preface for Wilkie Collins the frozen deep they had written a preface for Wilkie Collins the frozen deep so what is the right answer here Wilkie Collins the frozen deep the frozen deep so what is the right answer here everybody the frozen deep is a 1856 play by the way by William Wilkie Collins so this was also written under under the uh, the guidance of the same person who's writing the preface Right. So that is that is also another important aspect altogether. So what is the correct answer? Yes, Dickens is the right answer. Dickens is the right answer. Dickens is absolutely the correct answer here. OK, moving on to the next question very, very quickly. So here Charles Dickens is right. In which of the following fictional novels does the central character summarize the situation with his last words like a dog? Right, like a dog. Very beautiful work altogether. Extremely important work of Kafka that we are talking about. And the protagonist says, like a dog, like a dog. So this was posthumously published on 26 April 1925. Um, on the uh, morning of his 30th birthday, there is a central character, right? And that is the person that we are talking about. I think I've given enough hint. He talks about the fact that he is like a dog. Yes, the trial is the right answer. So Joseph K, who is the chief cashier of a bank, he is unexpectedly arrested by two unidentified agents from an unspecified agency for an unspecified crime. And that is causing absurdity. So Joseph is not imprisoned. However, he is left free altogether. But he is told to wait for the instructions that will come from the committee of affairs. Committee of affairs. Remember, this question comes in. And he says also, he says also, he summarizes his situation in the last words like a dog, like a dog altogether, right? Uh, you know, they're, they're taking him to a small quarry outside the city and they kill him with the butcher's knife. They're killing him with the butcher's knife as well. And that is something which, which the work was trying to talk about, that we're all helpless, especially in the case of a totalitarian regime altogether. So the trial is absolutely the right answer. All the other works are equally important. Which of the following works by Benjamin Dizzarelli is a Roman athesi? Is a Roman athesi. What is the right answer here, everybody? 
what becomes the right answer here what is it uh, which which becomes the correct answer here everyone this is like a really simple work altogether so uh, even when we are talking about uh, the the plight of the working classes is being told about a roman thesis is a novel with a thesis by the way what is a roman thesis roman thesis is a novel with a thesis that means uh, it it wanted to create it's a polemical work altogether you want to create more active uh, aspects altogether yes what is the right answer here everyone sorry yes uh, sibyl is absolutely the right answer sibyl is absolutely the right answer sibyl of the two nations 1845 work it's a roman thesis right roman thesis is a novel with a thesis novel with a thesis that means it wants to raise certain important concerns altogether which of the following poems by adrian rich discusses mary curie's discovery of polonium and radium mary curie's discovery of polonium and radium polonium and radium polonium and radium polonium and radium so which is the right answer over here which is the right answer over here polonium and radium both of them are being told about polonium and radium what is the right answer there yes it is power so uh, the dream of the common language is a work of poetry uh, that was given by uh, you know that that was actually coming uh, by rich and the book is divided into three sections there's power there's 21 love poems and not somewhere else but here uh, so there are three parts dream of a common language dream of a common language is the work and there are three parts to it power is there 21 love poems is there and uh, not somewhere else but here not somewhere else but here and you know in power we are able able to see that there is a eulogy for the dead scientist maria curie i don't know why this is not uh, working so there's this uh, there's this eulogy there's this el uh, there's this eulogizing or there's a tribute that she's paying to mary curie and we are able to see that everybody is being told by rich that we need to feel her power as well she also talks about that had it been uh, uh, you know a man probably the story would have been glossed even further So Curie was a very famous figure, by the way, in the field of science altogether. She devoted her life uh, with Pere Curie, the husband, and the research of radioactivity. Remember, so power is absolutely the right answer. The dream of a common language divided into three parts, by the way, right? Dream of the common language, dream of the common language. The common language is divided into uh, three parts, and one of the parts that is there that is power. Power is the work that is dedicated to Mar Mar Maria Curie and the kind of power that she had. all together what is milton's argument in his pamphlet of true religion of true religion of true religion what is his argument that he is trying to make what is the what is the uh, argument that he is trying to make over here what is the kind of argument that he is trying to create over here what is it that we are able to see what kind of argument is being created over here remember he is accusing the roman catholic church of blatantly changing scriptures and blindly leading the gullible members astray you're just leading the gullible members astray altogether he also argues that the catholic church's reliance on uh, on popery is a false religion altogether altogether you know milton is starting his he says increase of popery increase of popery so imagine uh, this is the same thing that happens right if there are so many if there are so many people who will guide you for one thing automatically it just becomes like a grub street world altogether where some will be of poor quality as well right absolutely right all of them is the right uh, all of them is the right answer he alleges the roman catholic church of changing the scriptures he criticizes the roman catholic church he criticizes the popery of the papal system because you know these kind of systems are also inherently corrupt you are you are then becoming extremely uh, cunning in order to get those votes all together Roads to Masuri it's a beautiful work is authored by which of the following indian authors roads to masuri roads to masuri after your net exam perhaps we visit a hill station take this book along uh, it's beautifully written roads to masuri uh, trying to tell you about winter surroundings and you know the the role that they have played uh, in the winter surroundings all together uh, you, you're clearly able to see but beautifully written all together what is the correct answer
Yes, absolutely right. This is Ruskin Bond. This is Ruskin Bond who's writing Roads to Missouri. Roads to Missouri is a work written by Ruskin Bond. Ruskin Bond is absolutely the right answer. He's the one who's associated with uh, with uh, the, the work Roads to Missouri. Which of the following poems by Robert Southey is based on the supposed Welsh prince who fled inter uh, intestine uh, conflict and sailed to Americas in the 12th century? Very simple work altogether. And there's an other work by pv shelley which will be asked next what is the right answer here what is the right answer here this is the epic poem that he's producing uh, you are able to see that the first part is telling us about the person being in wales it is describing him as a welsh uh, nobleman whose family breaks down into a series of bloody disputes because of royal success uh, succession yes uh yes 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 i think i saw Dulal has given the right answer. Uh, yes, Madoc is the right answer. Madoc is the right answer. Madoc is unwilling to participate in the struggle, and you know he decides to uh, go to America. So there is there's this bloody war taking place in the within the family for succession, and Madoc says that you know. Uh, I just so very similar to Calphus. Today we have looked at two characters, Madoc and Calphus. Calphus, the eldest son of Tamburlain. Remember that. I hope you are able to keep that in mind. So we are able to see that Madoc, who is unwilling to participate in the struggle, he says, "I am going to America to start a new life altogether." And when he reaches America, he is seeing a bloody human sacrifice of the Aztec nation, the Az Aztec nation, um, because you know the, the 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 tribes are also getting killed altogether. So uh, then Madoc believes that you know. There's a defiance of uh, God altogether, which is clearly, clearly visible. And then he he says, okay, no, no, there's nothing doing. I will have to at least, I cannot, uh, I cannot run away from this situation at all. I cannot run away from this situation. What, which is the penalty that Wolstein, that Wolstein and Ginotti, Ginotti pay for the delusion of the passions in Saint Erwin's a Gothic horror novel by P. B. Shelley. Saint Erwin's a Gothic novel, a horror novel by P. B. Shelley. So again, what is the right answer here? Saint Erwin is an important work, uh, right? Saint Erwin is a is a major work that we are talking about. Why is Saint Erwin important? Saint Erwin is important. It's called uh, the Rosicrucian opens. Uh, so uh, you know the Rosicrucian it opens uh, when there is this thunderstorm that is taking place. What becomes the right answer? Wolfstein, the Wanderer in the Swiss Swiss Alps altogether. Yes, 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 yes. Absolutely right. So, uh, do take a look at all of these work, works as well, because a lot of times we we are not looking at it. So, what is the penalty that Wolfstein and Ginotti pay for the delusion of passions? They are stuck dead by a lightning. They are stuck de stuck dead by the the thunderstorm uh, thunderstorm lightning that is taking place. Um, Tennyson's Tithonus is addressed to which of the following characters? There's an address to which of the following characters that we are able to see. There's an address to some characters. Who are the characters that we are able to look at Tithonus by uh, Lord Alfred Tennyson. The poem is say, uh, uh, showing us Tithonus speaking to uh, a particular, uh, you know, th there is someone that he's speaking to and uh, he's confronted with old age. The fact that, you know, all of us want to be immortal, but then not with, uh, with uh, Im Im see, the more we are growing older, there are bodily pains that are accompanying and it becomes really unbearable for us to survive. So it's just not, uh, that it's, it's just not that we should just seek for um, being permanently here on the planet, but we should also so look for youth but then that was not being asked at uh, at all so it became really problematic b is absolutely the right answer uh, eos is the person with whom he is interacting so tithonus is addressed uh, tithonus is addressed to which of the following characters eos is right which of the following authors between wrote between men english literature and male homosocial desire a foundational work of queer theory the same person who's telling us about the epistemology the epistemy of closet is the writer writing between men is a writer writing between men so who's this person who's writing between men it is exploring the oppressive effects on women and men because of the cultural system altogether uh, so male male desire could be intelligible but you know the fact that uh, the the female desire for the female is uh, is unthinkable entirely 
so there is a male homosexual desire but then that is for the male bonds but not for the women bonds uh, women camaraderie were also not yes it's eve kosovsky sedgwick it's eve kosovsky sedgwick please add it to your quest studies notes as well let's do one last question for today and then we'll call it today and tomorrow we'll circle back at some important details who's the founder of the trans modernist movement who's the founder of the trans modernist movement who's the founder of the trans modernist movement what is the trans modernist movement by the way the trans modernist movement is a cultural movement started by this argentinian mexican philosopher it is telling you about the development uh, of uh, the period after post modernism following post modernism uh, so you know there is a uh, trans modernism now there is basically coming together of tradition and modernity there is coming together of tradition and modernity you need to revitalize modernity don't destroy it with the previous uh, previous uh, traditional values try to keep back some of them altogether so you're trying to embrace certain aspects of your tradition as well you're trying to embrace certain aspects of your tradition as well yes uh, absolutely right dussel is the right answer henry dussel is the right answer henry dussel is absolutely right so trans modernism after post modernism which is trying to keep both tradition and modernity alive uh, please review all of these questions i'll try to post some more content related to all the questions that we've looked at uh, so just make sure that all of you are going over most of these questions once again and these writers once again uh, just to quickly review we looked at the princess progress by christina rossetti uh, we looked at uh, butterworth's uh, play um, which is set again so remember jerusalem the play which which uh, is getting written by jess butterworth which is dealing with saint george's day uh, we we spoke about the setting of pipa passes we spoke about tom's two parts arcadia we spoke about harold pinter's memory plays uh, we spoke about samson agnes and also milton's um, pamphlet on religion on true religion altogether classical works were also discussed tambelin was discussed tennessee williams we had talked about the night of the iguana so night of the iguana something that you can take a look at so a lot of plays crucible also i think there was a question henry kepson master builder uh, the character anton chekhov siegel so try to cover goethe's faust that we had looked at so a lot of these questions that we've looked at benjamin disraeli or adrian rich writings just revise all of them and make proper notes also uh, so that if in case any of these writers or works are coming in your exams you should be in a position to answer them in a better way altogether all right thanks so much thanks to see thanks ravi thanks nikomoni thanks to basum sushmita um uh... So Sushmita just revised it. So if you don't know these questions, but Jay, just make a note of it in a separate copy and just make sure that you're doing it. Thanks, Viva, Sutapa, Ravi, Suman, uh, Satyajit, Sutapa, Varendra. Thanks so much, everyone. Take good care of yourselves. And if there are any other further doubts, concerns, any help that you require, please feel free to let us know about it. Okay. Thank you so much. Keep yourself energized. Keep yourself motivated. Have fresh fruits. Have fresh juices. Uh, and enjoy the entire process. Be very curious about literature and. Try Trust me, you're just going to be going miles all together. Thanks so much, everyone. We're in it together, so don't worry at all, right? Uh, you can make our lives hell and miserable if you face any any problems uh, all together. Uh, not hell and miserable. I think rather we'll be lucky to help you out in the process. Uh, so thanks a ton, and Zia and many others. I feel um, I feel like I I would love to see all of you coming in the spotlight. Okay, everybody or everybody should be there uh, all together. Oh, Rizwana, that's so sweet of you. Thank you so much. So, all of you, you need to start preparing now. All of you have to come to the spotlight and get yourself interviewed after you've cleared the exam. Okay, so start, uh, start visualizing that as well and manifest it. I'm sure things are going to be sorted. Okay, thanks everyone. God bless. Take care. I'll catch up with all of you in the evening as well as tomorrow morning. Bye.